Renee and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while, but the kids are back in school and I'm back in the kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how I made an adorable hedgehog cake. Last December we had a new addition to the family, a pet hedgehog named Lulu, and she inspired today's cake. So if you want to learn how I made this hedgehog cake, let's get started. The first step is to make the quills because they'll need time to set up. I melted some chocolate candy melts as well as some white candy melts. And then using a tapered offset spatula, I'm going to scoop up some of that chocolate and paint it onto a piece of parchment. I'm making kind of a long teardrop shape and it does not have to be perfect. This is very rustic. Then using a smaller spatula, I'm going to mix in some of the white candy melts right on top and it's just kind of a marbled effect. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to make sure that these are thick enough that they're not going to be too fragile when they're set so we don't break them attaching them to the cake. These are very quick to make. It's a very simple process. I made two sheets for this cake. I don't know exactly how many there were. They can be all different shapes and sizes. I think the variation really just adds to the look of the cake. In all, it took me about 10-15 minutes to make these. It's a really quick process. Once all of my chocolate quills were made, I just set my trays aside so the chocolate could set up. And in the meantime, I can move on to working on the cake. For the cake, I baked off two 9 inch rounds by 2 inches tall. This is a vanilla cake and I'll have my recipe linked down below. I'm just going to level off the top of each cake. Then I fill my cake with a layer of delicious chocolate Swiss meringue buttercream. That recipe is also going to be linked down below for you. I'm going to do just a little simple carving to shape this cake into a teardrop. These big pieces from the side can be set aside as cake scraps for your family or you can make cake pops with them later. But the teardrop shape is going to look like the hedgehog because they have a little narrow face and a bigger body. So after I get these big wedges off, I can work on tapering the front narrow part of the cake and then rounding the back part of the cake. Once the cake is carved, it's time to crumb coat and then set it in the refrigerator to chill. When the cake has had time to chill, it's time to assemble. So I grabbed my chocolate quills and I'm going to gently release them from the parchment. I'm just using a little offset spatula but they should slide right off. I have my cake out of the refrigerator and now it's time to ice it with more of that delicious chocolate buttercream. I'm coating the back two thirds of this cake with the chocolate buttercream and I'm going to stay away from the front one third of the cake because I'm going to add a lighter color buttercream there. For 
for the front part of the cake, I took some of my vanilla Swiss meringue buttercream and added just a touch of the chocolate so it makes it a nice tan color. Then I'm just gonna ice the front face part of the cake with this tan buttercream. Where the two buttercreams meet, I'm just smoothing the lighter buttercream into the chocolate buttercream just to help it blend a little bit. Next, I took a tiny bit more of the chocolate buttercream to darken up some of that light tan just a little bit. And I'm gonna use this for the very front part of the face. Hedgehogs come in all kinds of color markings and Lulu has a very dark face. I didn't wanna go that dark, but I thought it would add just a little bit more detail to darken up the very front. I added a little bit more of that tan wherever I thought it was necessary and tried to smooth everything out to a gradient. I made some really simple fondant details for the face. Two little balls will be the eyes. And then a slightly larger ball that I pinched to taper one end of it will be the nose. And I made little nostrils by going in with a modeling tool just to make two impressions. And for the ears, I started with a disc of the black fondant that I flattened out to about a quarter inch to a half inch thick. Then cut it in half so my ears are the same size. Stand them up on end and make a curve and pinch the back a little bit to make the ear shape. Then I can add those fondant pieces to the cake to finish off the cute little face. And now for the fun part. We get to add all of those chocolate spines to the cake to bring this prickly creature to life. I went in with a first round of spines to create some symmetry with the cake. So I'm not trying to close in all of the gaps, but I'm trying to lay them out so that they're staggered and look symmetrical all the way around. I also have some of my chocolate buttercream in a pastry bag and wherever I need help attaching the spines or helping them to stand up, I'm going to use just a dollop of the buttercream. Once I made my way all the way around the cake and I was happy with the symmetry and how it's looking, I went in with additional chocolate pieces to fill in the gaps and make the spines on this hedgehog look nice and full. And that's it, this adorable hedgehog cake is all done. It was so easy to make, I hope you'll give it a try. And I hope you liked this video, if you did, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss new videos and click the bell icon to be notified every time I upload.